Welcome to another night with Quick Fix Golf at quickfixgolf.com, where we do a free analysis of your swing live, where you just get out your cell phone and you video your swing, upload it to our site, or email it to us at quickservice at quickfixgolf.com, and we will do a complete analysis live. You'll be able to go on our online reservation system, book a time, participate in the lesson, and you'll get the video so you'll never forget what you learned. And tonight, our topic is the arc of bunker play. And who's our main host for this is Darren DeMaley. Darren. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. I spend a lot of time in the sand, so I should I should know. <clears throat> and there he is with his old chief there, both Jim Flick and Jack Nicholas, And a few and other Jack, people. And you know, Jack, and Jack was a horrible bunker player. I mean, horrible. Um yeah, he was he was begging not to hit it in a bunker. Of course, he didn't hit it in bunkers, but that's why he wasn't very good out of it. But um, anyway. And then we have tonight is a special guest, Steve Hibbard, who is now going to be, or has really taken the reins at Patterson Golf Park. Hey, Stevie, head professional Army Navy Country Club. That's the, is that the clubhouse where you were at? Uh, yeah, that is the new one. Oh, there was an old one when you were there. It was an old one. Yeah. Now they have, uh, they've, uh, modernized everything and, uh, tore, tore the old one down. And, um, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty impressive, uh, structure these days. You're a former head coach at George Mason University and you've been teaching a lot of golf. I don't know what the heck you're doing. I have. I've been. I've enjoyed every minute of it, and uh, you know, it's uh, nothing better to uh, form relationships, but to uh, talk about golf and uh, make golf better for each and every one. All right. So just so everybody sees that I wasn't fired or anything, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here, <laughs> and I'll be doing a lot of the online stuff because we're really rocking on that right now, big time. All right, Darren, take it away, buddy. All right. Well, before we get started, I want to just uh, ask a favor of everyone. Uh, we're we're doing a lot more of these online webinars, and we'd love for you to invite a friend. Um, we've got a lot of enjoyment out of it. You're getting a lot of um, a, a lot of uh, knowledge. So don't be afraid to share it with a friend, because the integrity of these webinars only get better um, with uh, with more people that we have. So please and invite a friend. You get a lot of enjoyment out of these. So um, share that with someone else. So. If they don't have That's a great my... yeah, if they don't have a great time, I promise to mow your lawn for a year. <laughs> Tough crap. Right. I don't think we want you to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, the bunker shot's the only shot in golf where you don't hit the golf ball. Yeah, it's, you have to see Larry. It's the easiest shot in golf. <laughs> you have to see Larry <laughs> Frazier. Yeah. Well, that's the idea. You don't hit the ball. That 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 is <laughs> that's the idea at least. The only shot that you don't hit the golf ball. And uh, we're going to go over a couple different uh, components of hitting a bunker shot. There's three, at least in my book. You've got um, the mindset. That's going to be the first part of it. The second part is going to be the setup. And then the last part is the in-swing mechanics and philosophy. So things are going to kind of fall into those three different categories. And um, and that's what's really going to make you a great, oh, oh, what happened here? The mindset. It was that, is that Lopez's brain there on fire? I think that's what that is. But it is. Wow. Yeah, you see, they, <laughs> your brain on drugs, and they show that thing, and they show the fry egg. Right? <laughs> this is your brain on <laughs> Oh, oh, dear. If we're having too much um, to So as far as the mindset, there's a couple things that we have to think about. Uh, hitting a bunker shot takes a lot of courage. You're you're in a really close position, um, and you have to make a big swing. So you know the brain doesn't like that making big swings in small areas, but that's what has to happen. So you have to just um, have a lot of courage. You got to have some uh, some guts to hit the shot. Chico used to say it's a big swing in slow motion. Are you still there? Yeah. Next oh. next slide, please. Oh, I'm sorry. What do you, you, know, you, <laughs> you hire illegal aliens? That's what happens. So go ahead. That's what happens when the Cubans driving the bus. There, there you uh, go. you got to have the right goals. You, you know, what is your mindset? What are you trying to do here? 
just get it out. The last thing you want to do is incur a penalty stroke by trying to hit the shot again. So try not to get cute with it. Just get it out of the bunker. And then the last thing is I see way too many people trying to hit behind the golf ball. And that's the worst piece of advice that I've um, I've heard in a bunker. That is not what you want to do. You want to make a swing underneath the golf ball because the minute that you – Start trying to hit an inch or two behind it. Well, you're going to do that, and the club's going to go nowhere, and the ball's going to go nowhere. So you want to make a swing where you're underneath the golf ball, not behind it, throwing some sand out of the bunker onto the green, because that's how that ball gets moved. The sand is moving the ball. So you got to have the right mindset going into that bunker shot. And it's super important to have the right tool. You know, you got to have some bounce on most bunker shots. And here's a picture of the ping lob wedge. And if you don't have one of those in your bag, it's uh, you're playing for second place because that club is designed so well to uh, get a ball out of the bunker. It's got a big flange to it. It's got lots of bounce to it. And it's it really like cheating. It really is. So having the right tool is important. I like a lob wedge. It's got a little more loft in there. You can go with a sand wedge. Um, but a, a ping eye, with the, those are just, it's like cheating. Okay, so now we're going to set up for success. So you can see um, the big cat here, and a couple of things that uh, that's easily noticeable is he's leaning forward. You can see kind of he's got everything positioned more towards that front foot. His hands are relatively even with the golf ball. He's got just a slight bit of shaft lean forward. I'm not a big fan of that, but um, that's just a slight amount, so that's okay. I'd rather see the... Um, the hands is a little more neutral, and he's dug his feet in, right? He's dug his feet in so he can make that swing where he's underneath the golf ball. By digging your feet in, it allows you to enter the sand a little bit earlier because you're lowering yourself in relationship to the golf ball. So setting up is, is crucial to hit this shot. There you have it. Look at all these slides popping up. This is exactly what I was saying. Last part, square to the target. Uh, you'll see a lot of magazines and... Um, Commercials on TV where advice is given to open up, set up open to um, the target, and that is not uh, good advice, in my opinion. Setting up square is going to allow you to be a little more shallow into the bunker. When you set up open, then that club is coming down too much into the sand, and you're going to take too much sand. But it's taught everywhere. But to me, it doesn't make much sense when you get wide open like that because it's just going to encourage – too much of an up and down swing in the bunker. So setting up square and maybe a, a little slightly closed would be at least in my book what's preferable. Now last time, did we run the Tiger video on your computer or mine? We did, no, it was on, uh, it was, you were letting me drive the bus. Okay, would you wanna go ahead and show that video you have? Sure. Yep. Okay, hold on, here we go. Here we go. Dun, 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 I'm getting dun. pretty good at this. Technology at its best here. Look at this. The bus is in motion and, and we're we're changing drivers. There you go. There you go. There we go. How about that? That's flawless. There All right. Go. Can you see the screen? There you go. There we go. See your screen, yes. All right. So a couple neat uh pieces of video here that I found on the internet. And you really get a chance to see how Tiger practices. So this gives us a little glimpse into the insight of, of what he's doing. What uh, I noticed on this one here, and if you, if you pay attention, you'll, you'll see lots of different things. You just got to pay attention. Watch what he does with his golf club here. He takes his club, and he's drawing a line in the sand. Now, if you weren't paying attention, you wouldn't even realize he's doing that. And what that's doing right there, this little line that he's drawing in the sand, is it's giving him a reference point of where his golf ball was. So when he hits the shot, he'll know where he hit uh, the sand and how much sand he took, which is a little reference line like that. So I think that's a really great way to practice. Have a reference line in there where, where your ball was so you can see what type of, um, of divot that you have in the sand there. So there's one thing that I noticed. And then here's another one. And we did a, I did a YouTube um, about I don't know, maybe two or three months ago. And this is Tiger exaggerating what he's trying to accomplish in the bunker. 
So he's actually throwing the head of the golf club. The reason being is he's trying to expose the bounce of the club. Look at that there, right? It's an exaggerated feel. And good players know that you have, you have to exaggerate feels in order to just get that little foot that you're looking for, that little inch. You got to exaggerate it. And then watch him going in and hit the shot. Watch that little lean he's got there, that little lean forward, lean forward, stay forward. Nice full swing. Maintains the flex through the shot and has a good finish. Let's compare that to a full swing by him. Let's see a full swing by the big cat here. Let's look at this one here. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the leg and knee action. So at this point here, he's almost um, locked up that lead leg. The ball is well gone here, and he's still maintaining flex in that lead leg. So I think that's another key component to hitting a bunker shot is that you maintain the flex in the knees. And that's going to keep you nice and close to the sand, allow you to get underneath the golf ball. But um, maintaining the flex in the knees is another uh, good in-swing kind of fundamental there. But it's much different than trying to hit a full swing. You can see that leg locks up there. All right, a couple other pieces of footage here while I've got the while I'm driving. We talked about this one a little earlier today. You know, one of the greatest bunker players of all time. You know, Gary Player was definitely one, but uh, Seve was was also pretty darn good. And I found this once again online. And, and what I want you to pay attention to is in the finish, watch how he kind of puts the club in the holster there, as I call it. Makes this nice big full swing, and he lets the club fall into the holster. So to me, that just goes to show how much tension is there as he's holding the golf club. So there's no way he has much tension to let that happen. Look at that. That club's just falling down right in the holster. Right? Most of us are gripping on so hard that we white knuckle it, but Seve's doing completely the opposite. He's just letting it fall right in the holster there. Show show how little sand he takes. Sure. That's how I was taught. And you and you watch. Yep, she's not taking. See, there's a very little amount of sand he's taking, and in my opinion, why or how he's taking that little sand have, has to do with how he was learn to play the game you know he learned to play the game he found an old three iron i think it was in a dumpster and uh, that's the only club he had so he learned to hit different shots with just that one club and he got really good with his hands so uh, very little sand here this goes to show how well his hands are how, what, what talent he had there um take that little sand there not a lot of sand there at all. Okay. Got somebody. Uh, I'll give you. I'll give you back the controls here. Hold on. Hold on. All second. right, coming your way. Come my way. Coming your way. Somebody's going to go. Oh, here we go. There it is. Then it presented. Okay, sure. Here we go. Swing technique and philosophy. Go ahead. Yep, so that swinging technique and philosophies that we just talked a little bit about that. You can see the um, the leg action there in that picture about the knee flex. I think that's an important part of it. He's finishing forward. You had to keep running the slides there if you would. 
And like we just talked about with Seve, you got to move the correct amount of sand. And um, and the correct amount of sand comes with good hands, and it also has a lot to do with the path that the golf club is moving on. If you can keep that path on the shallow end, you're not going to take a lot of sand. And here's what I mean by path. The blue line there indicates a path that's too much from the outside. The orange line is a neutral path, and the red line is more from the inside. So I'm a big fan of either the red or orange. I'm not a fan of the blue, once again, because you start swinging too much from the outside. The club is entering the stand too steeply, and you cannot regulate how much sand you're doing if you're steep like that. So um, you hear it preached all the time. You see it in magazines. But, you know, I'm all about the, the highest percentage way to play this game. And to me, you're going to have a higher percentage getting the ball out of the sand with a shallower swing than you were a little steeper swing. But you got to have a good path there to, to regulate how much sand you're taking. All right. So let's open up the lines here to see if somebody has some questions. Who's got a question? Ball position. Ball position. Looked like Tiger had it around the middle. Okay. Yep, that's a, that's a good question. Oh, I like this. Go ahead. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. I I, I cut you out too, Darren. Hold on a second. <laughs> there you go. Okay, Darren, go All ahead. All right, I got it. Yeah. So ball position to me is a little bit like an insurance policy. You know, Tiger's pretty good. I don't think we need to put the ball really where he does. I think we need to put a little bit more forward just to make, in, ensure that we're hitting the sand first and we're getting underneath the golf ball as opposed to putting it a little bit more centered. So as far as ball position, I would just put it, you know, just a little bit more left of, of center than you would for, for a full swing. So you ensure that you're hitting that sand first because you don't want to hit the golf ball. So if you happen to hit that sand a little bit early and you're doing some good fundamentals there, you'll still get out. But um, I, I would not advise putting it as far back as that, at least that picture showed it. That camera angle might have been a little off, but uh, that that's where you really need to put the golf ball. Todd. Darren. This is Bob. Hey, I'm on, Bobby. Wait, wait, Two hold. questions. Hold it, Bob. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Go ahead, Todd. Well, I put, I put a message up on the chat. I saw that. So, can you guys see that? Yeah, yeah. You go ahead and ask. All right, me. I see the chat. Yeah. No, no, no. Go, so, go ahead. Yeah, so we, you know, we play a lot of um, golf in uh, some bad uh, golf courses that have sand that's hard pan. How should we enter the sand when there's like a half inch of sand? above the, you know, the hard clay. So, you know, uh, golf course owners, they're smart people. They want to make money. So they're going to allocate money on the important things first, like the greens, that would be number one. The tees would be number two. The fairways would be number three. And where do you think the bunkers lie in this? It's last. So a lot of golf courses don't maintain the bunkers as well as they should. So in a situation like that where you've got just a little sand under hard pan, you, everything that we just talked about has to go out the window. You, you've got to get to the point where you're you're digging a little bit more in the sand, which means you close the face. You can put the ball a little farther back, and then your path needs to be like that blue line. You want to be a little bit more steeper from, from the outside so you can get some leverage on the ground and dig and get that ball out. So there's quite a few things differently that you have to approach on those lies that aren't as as good now players on tour they're they're spoiled they get they get um perfect bunkers and when there's not a perfect bunker and somebody doesn't rake the bunker properly you know there's a committee of of uh, players that will address that you know I've, I've seen caddies break the bunker awful and then they get called out on the next day because they didn't rake it perfect so um you know we're going to encounter a lot of that those tour players they've got it they've got a cushy job there so uh, that's what you need to do on those those firmer, harder ones. Okay, Bob, what was your question? Okay, Darren, two questions. Number one, it seems like today the players are ha taking a wider stance in the sand trap, the first question. Second question, when you're swinging through, one even pace or accelerating? 
Okay, so the first question, a wider stance. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, it's going to give you a little bit more stability. But as far as the stance, you've got to have some flex in the knees. You've got to get down closer to that, to that sand. And then the second part of that was, um, you know, Dave Pell's a really smart guy, rocket scientist, turned into a golf instructor, has a method of going from what he calls short to long. So the, the backswing is shorter, and then the follow-through is a lot longer because he thinks most people decelerate in the short game. And I think he's right. There's a lot of deceleration going on there. But you, you have to get that club throwing the sand onto the green because most people slow down in the sand. And that's where that courage comes into play. You got to have some courage to create some speed to throw that sand on the green. So the biggest mistake most people make is slowing down into it, Bob. So that's what um, that's what I'd say there. Accelerate through, maybe a little shorter on the backswing, maybe a little bit um, more of a finish. But you got to, as Gary Player would say, strike the match through the bunker. So if that club isn't moving through the sand pretty quickly, that, that ball's never going to get out. So you got to strike that match in the bunker. Now, Stephen wants to know, does the club rotate over or does the club face stay open to the shot? That's a great question. So, you know, when I first met Nicholas and he was getting the first clinic that I watched him give, he was hitting a bunker shot. And he talked about the club face releasing. He talked about the club face closing. And up until that point, I'd never heard that before. I'd, I've heard you keep the club face open. Don't let the, the toe pass the, um, the heel. You got to expose the bounce. That's because when the, Club face releases, you start to use the leading edge of the golf club. But, you know, for Nicholas, it might have been why he was a, a, an a under average bunker player. But um, to answer that question, I, I think, yeah, to, to me, you've got to make sure that that toe doesn't pass the heel, meaning that club face should stay open the whole time. Who else has got a question? I got a question. Do you, do you use the amount of sand that you take yeah. to help control the distance? Oh, I, I didn't hear the question. I, I said, do you use the amount of sand that you take to help control the distance that the ball will come out of the bunker or not? Longer yeah, so shot. Is it. Hold on. The problem is when I open up all the mics, then we get some, there you go, Darren, now you're open. Okay. So yeah, the amount of sand you take definitely influences how far the ball goes. So, but I wouldn't try to take more or less sand depending on how far you're trying to go. To me, it's the finish. How much finish you have is going to dictate how far the ball goes. So on a short bunker shot, not much finish in there. Longer bunker shot, you're going to have a bigger finish in there. So that's kind of how I equivalent how far the ball is going to go, um, and it's not the amount of sand I'm taking. But that will affect how far the ball goes, the amount of sand that you do take. The right, less now, sand, the farther it's going to go. Now I got a question, and I'd like to ask Steve. Where is he? There he is. Let's turn his microphone on. Stevie. Yes, sir. Um, now you you were a I want to less of a turn a greenskeeper. You were on the, uh, let me see, the, uh, the, uh, the the members of the golf course superintendents group. When you're building a bunk, because we were talking about building one at Patterson Golf Park, um, is there anything you could tell everybody about how building a bunker, it could help recognize how fast that ball is going to come out, you know, with the kind of sand, which sand's faster, which sand's slower, when it's wet, when it's dry? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, Turn your one thing, out. one thing with bunkers is uh, uh, it's a type of sand. So one of the most critical parts of the whole um, whole approach to the shot uh, for the golfer is to dig in to see what you have. Uh, one listener talked about uh, hard pan and uh, some uh, green. Superintendents may put uh, six, seven inches of sand in it and overdo it. So uh, the depth of the sand is very important. So uh, some schools of thought, to, you know, you don't want to dig in too much, but you want to dig in to get a good footing. And um, 
the again wet sand versus uh, dry sand is very important when you're you're playing. And uh, but uh, superintendent, uh, as Darren said, uh, bunkers usually come last. And when you build a bunker, you want to definitely make sure there's uh, good drainage. Uh, water not uh, the water is uh, fully releasing uh, upon a rain or irrigation and. Uh, that's very important because that changes the complex of the shot uh, tremendously, wet sand versus uh, dry sand. So I would say just uh, get your footing. If a course has a practice bunker, uh, hit some shots in there before you get on the golf course. And uh, hopefully it'll be similar like a putting green is to the uh, greens that are on the course. So uh, that's my two cents. All right, partner. Thank you. I, I got one thing to say about that, Bobby. I, I got to spend a lot of time with Reese Jones when I was out in the Hamptons and uh, got to pick his brain about bunkers and bunker design and drainage and all that stuff. And in Reese's mind, a, if you hit it into a bunker, it should be a half a shot penalty. Okay. And um, if you've got bunkers that are designed where you can barely get it out, um, especially in a fairway bunker, uh, they're too severe. They're too too steep. At the Bears Club, I was mentioning this earlier. Jack had all the sand brought in on a train from Ohio down to Florida, and there was this coarse sand, um, very um, very heavy, thick sand. And the reason that he wanted it there, so if a ball landed in a bunker, it never ended up in its own pitch mark. That was one thing that really got Jack was if you hit a ball in a bunker, it shouldn't be plugged. It shouldn't be in its own pitch mark. And that's how he designed his bunkers with this special sand. And occasionally he would have the superintendent um, spray this chemical on all the the edges of the sand where the um, the sand got really, really firm and it wouldn't trickle down the, the side of the bunker. And um, we actually used brooms instead of rakes at the Bears Club for the first couple of years because that sand was so coarse and and heavy. Uh, very much opposite of kind of a powdery beach sand. But, um, you know, as far as construction and, and things like that, lots of uh, architects have different thoughts on it. Uh, Reese Jones, he's known as the the open doctor specifically for where bunkers are put, how they're designed. And not a lot of people will, will um, say Reese is, is wrong and that his bunkers are too severe, that it's a full shot penalty if you hit it in some of them. But um that's uh that's a little bit about you know some architects and their thoughts on design there it's, and um it's funny what he said because i've always said it's a one stroke penalty that's recoverable yeah i'm i mean um that's how i looked at it it's a one stroke yeah, penalty that's recoverable yeah. you know you still yeah. have a shot you hit it in the water it's a one stroke penalty that's not recoverable except that yeah, I guess that is too, but not as easily recoverable as a bunker shot. So, are there any other questions? If not, we'll call it a night. Hey, Bob, can I ask Steve a question? <laughs> Hold on. The problem is, Bob, we, we, we can't. When we open up two mics at one time, but well, go ahead, ask okay, your question. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. You, you ask him. No, is you there a life, Is there a life expectancy for sin? where they have to replace it after so long? That is a great question. I, I have not uh, ever come across that other than it washing out um, uh, due, due to rain, due to flooding, things like that, when it, um, you know, washes into the soil itself around the bunkers. But as far as life inspectancy, uh, I don't, uh, uh, and I may be wrong. I don't think there is any on that. It's just uh, uh, bunkers are reconstructed just like greens are because of the wear and tear. And um, it depends on what kind of sand they can get. Some courses uh, go the uh, inexpensive routes and things like that. But um, it, they should be uh, reconstructed for drainage purposes and uh, new sand put in there. So there should be a budget for sand and uh, new sand construction or sand trap construction uh, in everybody's uh, budget, or every golf course budget at some point. All right, Stevie, good one. Thank you. Thank you. All right, gang, I hope you yeah. enjoyed it. Steve, I have a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. I have a question, Steve. 
uh, how how big a factor is sand play in the in the collegiate game these days? Um, that's a question for both. I mean, Tom. that's a yeah. I mean, I don't know how to answer that one, Larry. It's um, I was how important Steve is it? Oh, you're asking Steve. Okay. Yeah. How, how big a factor is it in the college game today? Well, uh, it's very important, just like uh, uh, for a tour. You're, you're talking about could be a half shot, could be a full shot penalty. The practice time that the um, player should, uh, there should be a definite, just like the short game, they should be working on that as hard as possible because if you're the one that saves that uh, shot, you're going to be hopefully plus one on the field there. Uh, or one up on the field, I should say. So it is definitely not overlooked. Uh, just like the pros, you can, um, you know, just it's like day and night. If they're in the bunker, they prefer to be in the bunker because it's an easier shot than being in the rough. So uh, it's uh, it's uh, part of the budgeting of the time that the player uh, should be expected to, um, you know, not only be monitored but uh, coached and um, you know, worked on consistently. So it's right. it's uh, definitely important. Thanks. All right, gang. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's call it a night. When? Oh, go ahead, Albert. You had something real quick. Yeah, I'm just thinking. I'm watching uh, Sebi put the grip end in the holster. Right. right. That club yeah. head is w- is way above his hands. At impact, the club head is below your hands, and all of a sudden, as you go through the ball, the club head goes up real fast and then you can put it in the holster it's like you gotta the club head has to pass has to pass the hands and get I, I think so i think so for sure and it just goes to show you how quickly he's moving the 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 club through the sand right he's striking yeah. that match as gary player would say there's a lot of acceleration there and then all of a sudden you know, the, because there's no tension, you can put it right in that holster. But yeah, there's, there's a. I think the club does pass the hands, just like we saw with Tiger in that that little video clip. There, he's trying to get the club head to pass the hands. Yeah. All right, gang. Good session. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thanks, guys. Very good. <laughs>